here. Seems like a great hand out of Nick Fit. I was wondering if you would mulligan to Deathrite Shaman. Or, yeah, Deathrite. It's pretty close to that in game one. If you know what right. you're facing, like, usually you don't have that luxury if you're in, like, a larger tournament. Like, you, you don't have the luxury of mulling to Deathrite Shaman. But I think if he doesn't have it in his Oper, he, he almost needs it, you know? Yeah, like, he just gets run over if he doesn't have it, it seems like. As long as Reanimator has a pretty average hand. Can we tell who's on the play? It looks like Reanimator's on the play. Uh, which helps because the Deathrite Shaman is going to have summoning sickness when the reanimator go player goes for uh, the turn to animate dead here. Mm -hmm. yeah, it might just be a quick one. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem like there's much that. Yeah, it looks like there's actually nothing that Nick Bit could draw here. He has no discard spells or anything. So. Yeah, well, he's got four Cabal Therapies. He could, like, oh, sure, sure. hit Cabal Therapy and then YOLO a, a blank, blind Cabal <laughs> Therapy instead of running out Deathrite Shaman, but I don't think anyone would make, anyone would make that play. Yeah, um, exactly. yeah, so you can you can see how, like, if the Nick Fit player wins the die roll here, he goes turn one Deathrite Shaman, and then the Reanimator player is, like, too slow, but mm -hmm. because the Reanimator player won the die roll, like, just the opposite happens. Yeah. Interesting magic. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunate for uh, for Davey, but yeah, Dave. Okay, D Dave. Dave's a better name. <laughs> so he's brainstorming first. That's interesting. It, I assume yeah. this is in a turn. It just doesn't yeah. seem especially necessary. But I guess you want the shuffle. Yeah, I don't think it matters much because you're still gonna have the second mana for the animate dead. So I think he's just, I don't know, looking to see if he uh, he's shuffling anyway. So. Yeah. He's just looking at three more cards towards a Force of Will, maybe. Yeah. Which, as we know from the deck list, is basically irrelevant, but... Yeah. yeah. All right, so he did get Gristlebrand, which does seem like a reasonable choice. I love that old art on Animate Dead. I love the, that uh, yeah. art on that card. Yeah, it's great. As opposed to the uh, Reanimator deck one. Is that the only other version of Magic Online? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Show and tell, bunch of dazes that probably won't matter. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything that he could even play here to deal with the Gristle Brand? I don't think so. Peacekeeper? Peacekeeper? That's an option. <laughs> Which definitely gets forced or dazed. But... Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. Uh, one way that Dave could win this game is if the reanimator player like thinks that he needs to play show and tell rather to like get around the death right shaman and he puts the, uh, the peacekeeper, the peacekeeper. <laughs> into play. That would that be insane. Be I don't see why he would think that would be necessary, but I guess we'll find like, out. Against the active death right shaman, if he like thought that he needed to get another, another creature in play for some reason. Yeah. But there's no real reason to actually do there's that. There's no right? real reason to, but I mean, if you can't see a it reason not enough. to either, like sometimes <laughs> people do that, right? Like the end of t well, the there end is a brainstorm. Reason. Well, yes, we know the reason not to. But if he doesn't think of a reason not to, then maybe he makes another guy. He does have the crocus. That is an option. No way to find it, but he could just draw it, I guess. Mm hmm. Can the reanimator list deal with the resolved peacekeeper? Let me check here. The regular old Tide Spout Tyrant. That's a pretty yeah. good way. Also, Elish and Arn. Yeah, he's got both. Yeah. Uh, Alright, so he jams in Tomb. So it does seem like he's gonna try to go for something. I don't really see the point since it just gets exiled. Oh, against the, the Death Rite Shaman? Yeah. yeah. He has no, like, value, like, deep analysis or anything, right? No, nothing like that. Yeah, he just entombs in Tomb. Or, no, he got he got uh, Elish Norn. That's interesting. He doesn't have an instant speed reanimation spell in his, in his hand or anything like that. Nor another Entomb.
Dave makes the intuitive play of exiling the Iona. Oh, he's gonna. It's because it's a exhume. He can he can now respond with another. Oh, he did have another exhume. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Screen. That makes more sense. Way more sense. Yeah. Now he gets a thing. And it the this time he's getting Iona. Uh, it seems like the Elishorn is the one you'd prefer to get, right? I think so. I don't think it's the outer a whole lot. lot. Yeah. Probably not. Especially with all these counter spells and whatnot. Ice Elishnorn isn't that much better against Crocus anyways. Yeah. Does he have one that's good against Crocus? Would that be the Tide Spout Tyrant? Tide Spout Tyrant. Grave Titan. And Grave Titan. Grave Titan's kind of beatable though. Yeah. Mm. At least with the Peacekeeper buying him time, that kind of works. Alright, so he's jamming the Peacekeeper, which is definitely going to get countered. Mm -hmm. So now he can't exhume again. That is something. <laughs> Okay, and then he just packed it in. It was the YOLO peacekeeper. So, hey, maybe this will resolve. Yeah, maybe he didn't have, maybe he didn't find a force of will. It's always possible. It's always possible, man. Some, you got to go for it. You got to check. Yeah. You can't not go for it. That's for sure. His hand could be all lands. It could actually <laughs> just be all lands. All right, so what are we looking like for sideboards? A lot Seems of dead like... cards coming out on the Nick Fit side. Yeah, definitely. The Maskers are coming in, which makes sense. He does have planes... <laughs> That's all you care about with Massacre if your opponent yeah, has planes. Right? Yeah. You, you don't care if the creatures are It doesn't matter if it kills anything. As long as you can cast it for free. That's just good value. Right, yeah. He's cutting Lotus Petals. That's kind of interesting. He's trying, trying to slow down a little bit. Well, he's yeah, he's going to be on the draw. He might figure that uh, that he's going to be too slow anyway, so he's just going to try and like load up on Disruption to try and grind through. Hmm. If he's gonna bring in cards like Massacre and Abrupt Decay, then he then the slots need to come from from somewhere. And he's not facing a deck that has Wasteland, right? So the the need for Lotus Petal might be less. I'm not sure. That seems reasonable. Overvoltage just pointed out that the uh, the Nick Fit deck also helps both players fetch out basics into play. With, uh, with the Veteran Explorer card, so that could be a reason to not need Lotus Petal as well. Certainly valid. Doesn't help cast those uh, the Abrupt Decay, but it looks like Tim is not bringing in that many Abrupt Decays anyway. It looks like a Miser. Yeah, just the one. I guess he doesn't want to... Well, Seems he like Death Rite and Scoops are pretty bad for you. Yeah, you do have the Massacres, and you still have a few Show and Tells in. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how many Decays I'd end up with. It seems not bad, though. Just slowing him down a little bit. I guess it's only the death right that really ramps him. Not bad like this hand. This hand does, does not look ideal. There we go. There we go. Crocus and death right. Pretty Crocus nice. and death right, yeah. And he's got like a Chains of Mephistopheles as well. Could be yeah. good. <laughs> whatever, right. whatever that card does, who knows. <laughs> It does enough. That's all we need to know. It does does things. It probably does something, that is for sure. I've definitely had opponents on Moto like slam mind sculptors and brainstorm when I have a chains in play. It's, it didn't feel like reading the cards. Yeah. Oh, it's an option. Alright, so he's gonna lead on Death Right, then that's probably gonna get needled, and then the Crocus is gonna have free reign. And the Crocus seems pretty good. If he instead decides to massacre the Deathrite Shaman, he'll be able to save the needle for the Crocus. That's an option, but the Crocus is just a one of, so doing it preemptively is kind of aggressive. Needle in the Crocus, that is. Yeah, yeah. So maybe he wants to like save the massacre for more value later. Now he's gonna maybe. jam the Crocus or jam the massacre. It's definitely gonna work out better. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you can afford to play around the one of, then. Yeah. Maybe that's better. If I'm He's Dave here... I'm sorry, what? Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, if I'm Dave here, I just slam this chains. <laughs> just slam it. Yeah. 
slowing down brainstorms, anything trying to set up better. I guess we have it the does. benefit of seeing both hands. The the main reason to not slam chains here is if you uh if you if you want to like try and play around days, but reanimator deck is so compact, it's so it's so like efficient and and tight and stuff. I I, I like to get uh, my disruption down as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And setting it back a mana isn't too bad for Dave, I guess. If sure. Was like like worst case scenario, you trade one for one with the days. Yeah. Best case scenario, you like lock out a giant chunk of the reanimator player's deck. Because that's what Chains is. It's a, it's a meddling mage for, like, half of your deck, right? It makes it so he can't draw extra cards, and he has to discard first to draw a card? Yeah, you do this weird loot thing. I don't know. I just let Moto handle it. Discard first, then you draw, right? And then if you can't discard, you just mill yourself for one? Right? Yeah. It looks it looks like Dave prefers to to get the veteran explorers out and play around days here. That's another reason to massacre early, also like a small reason, I guess. Prior it's to actually, the yeah, it's actually a pretty compelling reason. Yeah. Nice. He's going to jam the entomb and just go for the reanimation spell, and the Caracas is going to get him. I haven't seen any re reason for him to wait. It does bring back the... Oh, this is going to be really bad for him, because the Exhum brings back the Death Rite as well. It does get to draw some cards. Yeah. How many Needle... Oh, he still has the one Needle. Okay. Yep. That's not too bad. So the Needle's still probably going to end up um, coming down on the Caracas. Yeah, the following turn. Did you see if Dave still had, like... Any answers to Needle specifically in his deck post board? Mm, I did not notice. It would make sense to have some number, right? Because you probably want like a disenchant effect for uh, for Animate Dead, maybe. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see what he's got that's potable. There's Reclamation Sage that's probably still in there. Yeah, probably just this, the Sage. Maybe he brings in Decays from the board to maybe hit like Animate Dead, maybe the Needle. It's it's a little ambitious, right? Because if you have a lot decay, of stuff to cut between, like, basically all the equipment, it's bad. How did the needle end up in the graveyard? Did he careful study it away? I think he was discarded to hand size. <laughs> That's unfortunate. <laughs> Depending on which side you're on, right? Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I'm so happy. <laughs> That was one way that he could uh, lose to the Crocus, I guess. It's also been like the focal point of our commentary this entire time. <laughs> yeah. And then Tim's just like, eh. Yeah, who needs the needle? <laughs> yeah, the assumption was that he held onto the needle to answer the Crocus. That's why he massacred turn one. That's just apparently not the case. And there's only the one needle in his sideboard. From here, what can you even do? Like... Especially with the Death Rite in play, he has to reanimate, like, if the Crocus is untapped, he has to reanimate, like, three things in a turn. Well, he can show and tell in the Elish Norn, and that'll clear the Death Rite Shaman, but it'll also break the Veteran Explorers, and it'll just get bounced to his hand with the Crocus. But it is a way to get the Death Rite Shaman off the board. Which is one of the problems. Um, as far as a hard answer to Crocus goes, uh, he does have an Ashen Rider in his sideboard that might have come in. And then... The Grave Titan and Tide's Bow okay. Tyrant. Are yeah, both, he sells uh, the non legendaries. Yeah. So he's not. Okay. He's yeah, not, it's not out of it. Bad. Yeah. But the game is a lot more amusing without that needle. <laughs> yeah, definitely a lot more interesting. And it's not like Tim's at like his starting life total, right? Like he's only getting attacked by these, these, these crappy little one ones and like a, some death right shaman pings, but. Now he's at eight after that Death Rite Shaman ping, and... It's and basically shut off the reanimate at this point. He's on a two-turn clock. Yeah. And things we were discussing definitely take quite a while, doing, like, the Elish Norn coming down, and then Karak is... Yeah, I suppose the Elish Norn does, like, clear the clock, though. So mm -hmm. that might be his line next turn, whether he has a follow-up or not. There's the Jute. Would you have left the Jute in? Seems pretty slow. Uh, it's pretty slow, but it's not like... Like we saw Dave's sideboard, there was not a lot of interesting stuff to bring in. Mm -hmm. Would you rather have the GTA than like a Miser's Abrupt Decay? That's tough. It's like, yeah. it's pretty tough. 
the 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 one thing that I could see the GTA doing um, is if your opponent gets like an Iona down and names black or whatever, <laughs> and you've got some terrible creatures. <laughs> yeah. Still the slowest answer to Iona ever. Minus seven, well, minus yeah, seven. GTA. Yeah, I mean you're not you're not you're yeah. not trying to minus seven minus seven it, but you, but it lets you attack into it, right? Like you can actually kill someone through the Iona if yeah. you had like a couple hits, you know, extra damage from it, yeah. He's trying to cast the chains and it's getting phased a couple times, I guess. He's hard casting the days, it looks like. I guess to take him off the death right mana. Oh, yeah, because he can't have death right shaman and Caracas up now. Mm -hmm. I think you just tap the Caracas, right? Like, what does it matter if Caracas is. Yeah, it doesn't really matter if it's untapped, right? Yeah, which is what he does. The show and tell will clear the board, though. The yeah, shaman. so I'm not sure why he cares so much about whether or not Deathrite Shaman is untapped. I guess it saves him two life this way. Yeah, by some old time. Or one more life point. I assume he doesn't really care about the chains. Like, he has a ton of cards in his hand, so the discard isn't that big of a deal. Uh, But he still needs to find a non-legendary win condition, right? And so how are, how are you going to do that? Well, how Chains works is you discard and then you draw, right? So you still see more cards. Kind of. Like, yeah. it doesn't really work with, like, the careful study in his hand, for example. <laughs> like, you can't... So this minus three cards. Right, yeah. And careful study's, like, usually, like, already down a card, so... It's just rough. So the double days line might have actually been pretty ingenious. Yeah, it seemed to work out reasonably well. They countered but, the chains with him solving mana. So. Mm -hmm. And he's up like one more life point than if he had just pitch cast the, the Force of Will. And he gets to hold on, like he still has Force of Will. Yeah. See if he responds with the death right here. If he doesn't, then the Elishron comes in and he clears the board and, does the, and he doesn't get the death right activation. Yeah. Um, Seems like you do it though, because like, what else are you worried about after the show and tell? Him doing, yeah, like, like what, really what, could, what could he be putting into play? Uh, maybe Tide Spout Tyrant, but that could just bounce the Death Right Shaman anyway. Yeah, and you can like, react to the. You can actually activate the Death Right after that. It's only the Elishnorn that clears it and makes mm -hmm. not activating the Death Right early bad. And Dave does decide to uh, respond mm -hmm. appropriately. So going to three, you're starting to cut off Force of Wills, Fetch Lands, stuff like that. Relevant things. Well, Fetch Lands aren't going to be that relevant. At or Brainstorm, point. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I guess Reanimator doesn't play that many basics, right? Yeah, there's only two basics in yeah, a Reanimator yeah. deck. But he can hardcast Force now. That becomes it's only three lands off of hardcasting Bristlebrand, so I guess that's an option. <laughs> That's not that far away. Presumably this game will go on for a little bit. Does but he have enough lands in his deck? One, two, three, four. Yeah, he has eight exactly. Got it. Perfect deck building. <laughs> Does he have enough white sources for that? Uh, uh, he, uh, yeah, he would need the, the Lotus Petal to, to cast uh, Iona. Can the viewers hear you over voltage? Oh, okay. So it just sounds like we're talking to our, our heads, <laughs> like the voices in our heads. <laughs> but yeah, if he had Lotus Petals, he could he could hard cast the Iona. Um, Stronghold will give him the Deathrite Shaman back, which is pretty useful. It is. It is. Especially because Tim like kind of needs to reanimate a Grave Titan sooner rather than later. How many show and tells does he have access to? Three, it looks like. I think he shaved one. I think he? he shaved one for the abrupt decay. I could be wrong, but I think there was just two post board. <clears throat> I don't know why he would go lower. Yeah, I don't really understand cutting them. 
he did uh he did go for the ballsy line. He went end of tomb, end of turn and tomb for uh, for Grave Titan. Yeah. Now you're just doing spider animations. Oh, which he did. did, he got there. <laughs> yeah, that could have really burned him because of the line you pointed out with full wrath stronghold getting back death right shaman. So if he hadn't found a reanimation spell, um like sooner rather than later. And he loses the Grave Titan. Then he ends up losing the Grave Titan, which is one of the only ways he can beat a Krakus, yeah. But I think he wanted to be able to hold up Force of Will if he had uh, if he had bricked on this turn. That's the reasoning I can see, anyway, for the for the end of, the end of turn in, in Tomb. Did he have a land in his hand? Because he has six mana. I think he drew the land off of the Careful Study. Okay. <laughs> no tax, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Not at all. Yeah. All right, so maybe Siege Rhino is still in the deck. That definitely doesn't seem like one that should be in the deck still. But Siege Rhino would be a fantastic answer yeah, to well. this end. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you ever get a pod going, like, what do you want to find that's not a Siege Rhino, right? Uh, I don't know what Marin does. <laughs> Deathrite Shaman still races this board. He can nice. still just bull rest stronghold back the Deathrite Shaman. And uh, well, does it race? He would take no, nine on so. board. So you have to draw a creature, which you can do. Yeah. Oh yeah, because he can uh he can Volrath stronghold back a yeah, creature. That that loses to the hardcast force of will. Mm. Of course. Looks like that's the line he's going for, though. It does seem like a reasonable line, but unfortunately he just had the Force of Will. Yeah. What an interesting way for the game to end. Right? Yeah, I didn't think this game was going <laughs> to go past, like, the... Uh... Well, and, and most people would not have double-dazed. Most people would have just forced the uh, the Chains of Mephistopheles, you know? Yeah. And and now it's relevant at the, at the, end, of the, at the end of the match. Yeah, the force will stay relevant. Yeah, would you have forced there? If like, let's say you don't have the days, do you force there? Oh yeah, I force there. Yeah. Okay. The chain, the chains, like because because yeah. of the careful study and stuff, mm -hmm. and the fact that like most of your deck is cantrips and whatnot. Yeah, it definitely hurts you quite a bit. It just seems at that point, but I guess I don't know what else you're too worried about, like holding onto the force will for. Yeah, there's not a lot of cards that matter that much. Yeah. At that point in the game. Huh. I don't remember the exact words there. So he draws the Veteran Explorer. He's still not dead dead, because yeah. he can block with the Deathrite Shaman this turn. Mm -hmm. And he still has the Siege Rhino out. Right, yes. Hopefully. He still hopefully has the Siege yeah. Rhino out. That's that's how I want to see this game end. If it's, if it's in his deck, he has the Green Sun Seeds as well. So. Uh huh, and then the uh, the peacekeeper would also be fantastic mm -hmm. on this board, if that didn't get boarded out. Oh, not he just like backs he it in. Kind of... Okay, Ziggy Stardust wins the match. Yeah. Well, had he not discarded the needle, that game would have ended quite a bit more quickly in his favor. I definitely thought he was not winning that game after he discarded that needle. Uh huh. So that was definitely interesting. I've uh I've definitely won that matchup from the uh from the Nick Fit Pod side before, but I wasn't playing Junk. I was playing Bug. And uh, and I had Phantasmal Image, and and I won it by going turn two, uh, Birthing Pod, two games in a row, and then my opponent made a made a Grizzle Brand, and then I potted away my one drop and got a Phantasmal Image and copied his Grizzle Brand and spent the rest of the match like tapping it down with Deceiver Exarchs and stuff. <laughs> anyway, that's pretty nice. Uh, 